Hi everyone. So, uh, if you've caught uh, my recent videos, I've been talking. I mentioned just say that uh, I've been requested to do video or multiple videos about the pole dart books, um, but try not to give too much away, which um, is quite difficult to do when you're talking about a twelve book series. So, what I decided to do is to do the format that this video is in, and that I'm going to have six pulled up videos. So I'm going to discuss two books per video, but I'm also going to talk about various different aspects of the world of Pole Dark, um, you know, range of fun characters to certain themes, historical events, all that kind of stuff. So this first video, I'm just going to talk about our main characters, what they're like and everything. And then with every single video I'm going to I'm going to flag up and say spoiler alert and then that is the point where I'm going to talk about more in-depth things that happen in the books so it's your choice to either turn off the video at that point if you don't want to be spoiled or keep going and you know watch it so yeah so it's entirely up to you so for this first video I'm going to be talking about the first two books which are Ross Poldark and Demelza. Now these covers are uh, because I when I bought these the they were um the recent series of Paul Dark was being um kind of promoted and such so I've got the actual <laughs> BBC cover arts for these two but the other ones I've got different different cover arts so you'll see these these two are quite significant than than the rest of them. So um first of all I suppose I should better explain what Paul Dark is about. And it basically follows this gentleman right here, played by Aidan Turner in the more, most recent uh, dramatisation of it by the BBC. Um, is It's Ross Poldark. Now, Ross is a man in the 1780s who uh, is, uh, he's overseas, he's fighting in the American War, Civil War. Uh, because he wanted to, uh, as as he jokes um, with his, with his very very soldier friends and such at the beginning of the book, he wanted to escape the gallows. So he decided to to join up. But he's been gone for so long that everybody thinks that he's dead. He's been injured, uh, as you can see from the cover here. I don't know if you see. He's got a lovely, nice scar on his face, um, and he has come home after a long recuperation to find everything has gone completely wrong. So, first of all, his father's dead. Secondly, the mine that his father owned has been shut, so all of the people in the who live on the lands that that are now his um have, have got no work and they're you know they're starving and such and he needs to help them out. Thirdly, his home, because there's been nobody there to care for it or anything, nobody living in it, has completely fallen to rack and ruin. It's it's just completely a shambles. And finally, the most devastating thing at all of all to Ross is that his love of his life, Elizabeth, the girl, uh, you know, he kept him going, who kept him alive whilst he was uh, injured and such, has uh, decided to get engaged to his cousin Francis. Um, this is a really monumental thing for Ross. It, it really, really affects him, um, and he it basically makes him hit rock bottom and he rather he has a choice he can either sink and and you know just let everything go wrong for him even further or he can fight back he can get his you know the mind back up and running he gets house working he can cope with elizabeth going off with his cousin as best he can uh, and he decides to swim so, so the whole Paul Art series is telling the story of Ross from that point on. It spans the whole series. Um, spans about, I think it's something about forty years or something. So you'll see in each book, um, it really there's really quite a significant amount of time um, within each one. I mean, for example, the very first one, as it says here, Cornwall, 1783 to 1787. So you've got four years alone in this one book, which equates to, if you've recent, if you watch the recent Poldark series, that equates to the first four episodes, spans four years. So as you can see, it's not just a case of, um, you know, it's each book is over, over a year or something. So there's lots of lots of information thrown at you, lots of stuff going on. Now, during the course of um, him getting himself back up 
um, on point, as it were, he meets a girl called Demelza, who is right here uh, on, on the cover of the second book, Demelza. Now, in the book, she is 12 when they meet. And obviously, because as I said, in that, those, the, that first initial book it spans four years. At the end of that book, she's then 16. So certain events that then happen in the second book uh, between uh, um, Demelza and Ross um, is more in line, obviously, with the age as the, you know, the lovely actress here who plays Demelza is. Um, you know, she, she's, not, she's not a 12-year-old girl anymore. Now, Demelza, she is, she's quite like Ross, um, but she has, she's quite different in other ways, in, in certain ways. She is very feisty. She's, you know, she's quite ballsy. She'll give her opinion. She, you know, she just, I think it, it's just mainly because of her upbringing. She's lived, um, you know, she's grown up with her dad and her six older brothers. She has to look after all of them. She, she's quite rough and, and and such but she has got the kindest most generous heart of anybody um around and she's really really stunning character i really love Demelza. that's that's what i uh, you know it's very interesting when you read the books how you really see it significantly you can see it in in the in the recent drama as well but you really in the books how polar opposite elizabeth and Demelza are Demelza, if you think of in the uh, how i like to describe her in the elements Demelza is fire and she's earth. She's very, you know, she's rough, she's raw, she's, um, can be quite harsh sometimes. But out of that grows the most beautiful, beautiful things. Um, whereas Elizabeth, she's, um, very, um, water uh, and light and air in that she's very pretty and she's very proper and she's been well brought up and she you know can fit in society very very easily but if you you know delve too far into that you could she, you know you could easily drown under her spell um there's you know she she can suddenly flip sometimes can Elizabeth so I and Ross is kind of in the middle of that so where um you know Ross is very generous but he can also um be quite feisty and, a, and kind of harsh at times um so he kind of you know he's he can be very light and fluffy and then you know turn into a quite serious um person so he kind of he's kind of sat in the middle of uh, kind of a mixture of the two so you can understand why he is drawn to both of them um so uh, you know and their kind of love triangle in a sense is the epicenter of the Paul Dark novels um and it's absolutely astonishing to, to read. I absolutely loved reading it. Now, there are other characters who are also, you know, in the main fix of this. So firstly, if we look to his cousins, there is Francis and Verity. Now, Francis and Verity have always have been well brought up and everything by, the, by their, their father. Um, their, their, even though Ross is their cousin, you kind of very much feel as if um, they they grew up with more money than Ross. Um, they they feel, well Verity doesn't feel this way, but I think Francis certainly does that he is better than Ross because of his upbringing and such. Um, but Verity is very much Ross's equal. They are really really good friends. They talk to each other about everything. They're very open with each other. She accepts everything that um ross you know ross's choices she's absolutely wonderful um she's 25 years old she's a spinster who's she's been looking after her dad and her brother and um she she wants to fall in love and marry and that leads um her down a very interesting road as as it does lead her whole family which i'll discuss later in the kind of spoiler section um so Francis, as I said, he yeah he he feels very differently about his situation to Ross, and it's very interesting too because um, there is the po a pulled up mine that is um, owned by Francis uh, and his father, but uh, it, you know, as his father says to him, it's really interesting when he says this. Francis is the type of man who will stand back and let the miners do the work, whereas Ross is the man who will go down the tunnel with them and do the work and do everything 
which is the which is the the man that the miner will work for he will trust he will do anything for and it's very true so um francis learns a great deal throughout these two two books uh there's also so obviously their father um lives with them uh and uh their their aunt as well um or should i say it's <laughs> you know uh ross's great aunt uh lives with them and i love her she's so funny because she um she constantly pretends that she's completely deaf just to have fun and watch people squirm and she likes to say comments that are particularly rude and such just for a laugh just to see what pe how people react because she's an old woman who's you know far too old to still be alive you know? so she she likes to play around with them which is a lot of fun to read now outside of the main family unit there are other characters as well so prudy and judge uh, sorry prudy and judd are um ross's servants they were servants to his father um he finds them in the in the ruins of their house um when ross um ross finds them when uh he returns home and they are a couple of servants they're very much comic relief for us they don't like to be doing work and everything but because ross has been gone so long they just don't do it anymore so he comes back and he very much takes control and makes them do stuff and he, he really winds them up they really don't agree with demelza they don't like demelza at all but as time goes on they really do come to um to like her prudy especially um and as and it's even said at one point in the books i'm pretty sure from what i can recall because it's it was in october that i, I read the poldark books um that she feels that demels is like a, a daughter of hers and so it's really sweet watching this friendship develop throughout the books and how it lasts all through um all through the books it's absolutely wonderful there is also a very interesting character that you have to keep your eye on throughout the books uh, and that was a guy called George Warlag. Now George uh, and his father owns a bank who um, they uh, they lend money to Francis um, and he, he, they, George becomes very good friends with Francis. He always has been sort of but he becomes particularly um close to francis throughout the course of you know the first two books and everything because ross has returned now the thing about george he's one of these guys who he hates ross he will do anything to destroy ross to destroy his reputation to destroy his money anything he can do he will do it to get ross and the reason why he's doing this is just because he's jealous he wants what ross has got and Ross, you know, he's constantly fluttering around Ross, trying to wind him up and getting in, get in his face and like yapping at him and such. But Ross doesn't respond to it. He doesn't care about George, and that's what winds George up. So it's very interesting, you know, watching him yapping away and trying to get um, Ross's attention. He just doesn't care at all. Um, but this will lead, as the time goes on, um, leads to very. Um, very interesting events let me put it that way um you'll have to <laughs> if you want to find out more you've got to watch the spoiler sections of my later videos let me put you know i'll i'll talk about it more um more then about what george does but he was he's a character he's kind of the only character throughout the all the books where i was you know just <laughs> i was thinking by the time the last book please please winston Grove please kill this man off because i really want to see him suffer for everything that he has done um but he, the way that winston chose um george's fate at the end was absolutely brilliant and was unlike anything that i thought it would be um but it suited him let me put it that way but again i'll be talking about that and later on in uh, spoiler sections of, of various videos um and the you know the last couple of characters i can think of off the top of my head just now thinking um that will that you'll meet and such um are dr ennis dr ennis um actually stitched up ross as it were when he was wounded he was the one who who you know formed that scar on his face stitching up nicely um and he has come to Cornwall to learn about illnesses amongst miners uh, and as being good friends with Ross, he, he you know he joins the neighborhood and such and um, Dr. Ennis gets caught up with some very in some very interesting events as well throughout the course of these novels um, in in Cornwall. 
And the last last one that I can think of um, is Jim. Now, Jim's a very, very interesting character. He is a, a young guy who um, has lived on Ross's lands, basically, since he was a kid. You know, um, he's well known um, to, to the pole ducks and such. Uh, he lives with his mum and his sisters. His dad is dead, so he has to provide for his family. He's fallen in love with a girl. Um and uh gotten gotten her pregnant and so he's getting married to her and everything but you know he's still worried about having to provide for uh, everything which leads him down the um down the road of becoming a criminal and how that um ends up it, it's really um really interesting really sad very historically interesting um if, if you look at the what happened um around that time and such it is it, it's, it's very 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 cleverly done what what he chose Winston Graham chose to do it broke my heart but it was you know because it was a time at that time this stuff was happening so therefore Jim has had the fate that, that he had um so yeah but there's another character I want to talk about really uh, really deeply moving moving character and that's Cornwall in, right, I, I live in the south of England. I've never been to Cornwall. I really should do, but I've never gotten around to going. And so I only have the descriptions that Winston Graham, um, you know, uh, does uh, has in this, written in this book, um, in these books, should I say, um, <laughs> about Cornwall to go off. And you can really tell he loves that land. He, uh, the way that he he writes about Cornwall is beautiful absolutely breathtaking to the point you can feel like the the wind on your face you can feel the sea you can smell it you can uh, you know the thunder and enduring terrible storms and all this lot it is so powerful it's a character in its own right is cornwall the way that he the way that he describes the land and it it, it makes you understand ross's um predicaments and such throughout the seasons of you know making sure that everyone is fed on you know who live on his land what's he going to do if this happens if that happens if the crop fails and all, all of this lot it it really is a stunning stunning character in its own right and i have loved i loved every single second of reading the pulled out books especially because of the way in which he describes um cornwall and i re i remember finishing the last book and i was devastated because i wanted to carry on i i absolutely loved it and to the very end he is writing it like it's a love story is it's, a, it's you know it, it, it you know to cornwall it, it's absolutely stunning i mean uh, you know if more people flock to Cornwall because of these books and for series and everything, that is that is brilliant because it deserves to be seen. I think it's it's stunning, stunning writing, and uh, wow, well, Winston Graham, I I love his work. I I definitely want to read other other works of his after reading the Paul Dutch series. Okay, so that's me finished talking about characters. So I'm going to talk about other things in the next video um, where I'm going to be discussing books three and four. But now it's your spoiler warning. So here you go. So I'm going to now talk about um, certain events that happen throughout the course of books one and two. And I think the, you know, the biggie, of course, um, to talk about is Ross and Demelza getting together. Um, now, as I said, Demelza when um, she first starts working for Paul Dark, she's 12, but by the time they get together, she's 16, so she is of age and everything. And it's really great that... Uh, I, was, I was really glad that they got together. There was something... She is... Even though she is quite harsh and she, you know, in, the, in her manner and such because of her upbringing, and she can be quite... She's quite different from Ross in various ways. They are equal in their marriage they are absolutely incredible um you can see why it is a case of their marriage survives and survives and survives throughout each of these um you know various situations that happen in each of these books because they completely respect each other they you know they they, they share everything equally they respect each other they can talk to each other about anything although in some some 
books as I, as I'll go on, you know, these these videos because of certain events, they do find it a bit more difficult to talk to each other about certain things, but that is understandable, you know, because of the, the various events. But I absolutely love it um, that they get together. When they have a child as well, it just feels like, oh, everything is magical, everything is wonderful, and I love it. But you know then, um, around the corner, something bad is going to happen. And when their their daughter, Julia, died, I was devastated. That really, really, really shook me up. Um, it, it, the way in which he writes um, writes her death, it, it it's really heartbreaking, astonishing writing. Um, I absolutely, I absolutely loved it. Um, it. It's just so devastating. Along with that devastation, um, you have the loss of, of Jim, the um, uh, young lad who lives on the Poldark land after he poaches uh, pheasants he gets caught and is sent to prison for two years and in the prisons at that time it's so great um how this is so historically accurate that um they were kind of shut away in cells so many of them crammed together with no air circulation no light and everything so disease just were just just rampant in in prisons and uh jim dies in in this in a really horrific horrific manner it's so hard um to read his death uh in 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 this book in these books it, it's really really tough going is that one um verity having a, a love affair uh with captain lenny who uh is very well known because his first wife died uh in an accident at their home but he is he was um questioned for murder uh, and everything is that everybody believes he's a murderer but he didn't do it it was a, a complete accident she fell down the stairs and hit her head um and uh and yeah so how that affects the Poldarks and Demelza for um, setting up their rendezvous and how that, that impacts Ross with the mines is very interesting. Um, you wouldn't think that those two would be connected, but it really does. And it shows Demelza the impact of her choices, what they make, and sets her on a course in the future to take certain steps to do certain things um, to make sure that everything is done for the correct reasons uh, and doesn't have a knock-on effect but she will do anything for Verity they are so they are so close they're not at the beginning of the book but they are as time goes on once Verity stays with them and she realizes that Verity is a good honest woman and she's a good friend uh, who will do anything for her um, Demelza and Verity become very close um, and such and at the end of our second book because of a situation of a shipwreck on Poldart land and Ross being absolutely devastated by the loss of Julia uh, and Demelza being really ill with the illness that, that killed Julia. He um he gets involved with um, plundering a shipwreck and is arrested at the end of the second book for it. Um, so, it, it, you know, it's it's there's there's a lot of stuff going on at the end of the second book but what i love about these stories is how rich they are there's so much going on there's so much there's such great characters such great writing and such and i love other stories like for example you have um francis losing after his father has died in uh, i think it's the end of the first book or the beginning of the second he's losing money um, left, right, and centre, and George decides to take him under his wing and give him some money to help him out. But you, but you know, it's because he wants Elizabeth. That's his whole main reason. Um, but how loss of money affects Francis because he gets very angry, and very het up, and he doesn't want to show Ross um, that he can't cope and everything. Um, uh, but he doesn't want Ross. He doesn't want Ross to pity him. He gets really wound up about how he feels about Ross and such. Um, so there's there's so much going on in the land of Poldark. Um, but one thing I just want to say, you know, it's absolutely fantastic, well written, well paced, such amazing characters. I I just I I literally I started the first book and within a day of um 
reading it. I had ordered all the other books on Amazon in one bulk load. Um, and I just, I just went through all 12 books in 12 weeks. I absolutely adored it and was devastated when it, when it finished. Um, cause I wanted it to carry on, but, uh, you know, sadly Winston Graham, uh, passed away and, uh, we won't see any more pulled up, but the way in which the last book ends is very, very lovely. And it's nice that it ended on high. Um, I'll say that. Okay, I'm going to stop there because I've been going on for the 25 minutes. Oh my. Um, so I'm going to uh, go on and do my second video. I'm going to be talking about books three and four. Um, and I think I'm going to be focusing on also more historical accuracies of the books because of in the third one, we're going into um, the French Revolution and such. So it's quite interesting how the world of Poldark is shifting. Um, and it's also the love triangle wise, it's getting is it's shifting there's there's something on the horizon coming up um more significantly in book five but still there's there's stuff going on in books three and four that i will um i'll talk about them in the next book um oh one thing i forgot to mention i've just realized um <laughs> one of the storylines in in books one and two i've got to say um is a very interesting murder mystery is in was it murder was it not murder involving dr ennis uh one of uh, ross's um workers and friends and his wife so yeah interesting storyline there as well for you to look out for um but yeah i'll stop there now so I'll be back soon with a second pull-up video and uh, yeah, I will, uh, I'll see you then. Bye.